This video will guide you through the top 22 desktop support interview questions, providing you with the insights you need to impress potential employers. Learn how to articulate your skills and experiences confidently with our practical answers and stand out in your next interview. 1. What troubleshooting steps would you take if a user reported their computer won't turn on? Firstly, I would ask the user to ensure that the power cable is connected properly both to the computer and the power outlet. If that doesn't work, I'd guide them to check if the power outlet itself is functional by plugging another device into it. If the computer still won't turn on, it could be an issue with the power supply of the computer. At this stage, I would suggest trying a different power cable or taking the computer to a repair technician. If the computer turns on but doesn't boot up, I would guide them to check if the monitor is connected properly and try booting in safe mode. If all these steps fail, it could be a more serious hardware or software issue that needs professional attention. 2. How would you handle an urgent support request when you already have several other open tickets? In this scenario, I would first assess the severity and impact of the urgent request compared to the open tickets I'm handling. If it's a critical issue affecting many users or important systems, I would prioritize it over less urgent matters. However, it is also essential that I communicate with all involved parties. I'd inform the users of the other open tickets about the situation and provide them with a revised timeline for their issues. This approach ensures that no one is left in the dark and everyone's expectations are managed effectively. When handling multiple tickets, organization and prioritization skills are crucial. I use a combination of ticketing systems and time management techniques, such as the Eisenhower matrix, to stay organized. This allows me to effectively prioritize my tasks based on their urgency and importance, ensuring that all issues are addressed in a timely manner. 3. Explain the difference between DHCP and static IP addressing. DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, operates by automatically assigning an IP address to devices on a network. This method is employed primarily for its convenience, as it eliminates the need for manual configuration. On the other hand, static IP addressing requires manual assignment of an IP address, which can be beneficial in instances where constant IP is needed, such as for servers. While DHCP is more convenient and reduces the risk of IP conflicts, static IP addressing provides more stability and reliability for devices that need to maintain the same IP address. 4. What is your experience with mobile device support? My experience with mobile device support spans a wide array of tasks, from setting up new devices to troubleshooting connectivity issues. I have supported both Android and iOS platforms, ranging from smartphones to tablets. I am well versed in configuring email accounts, installing apps, ensuring security measures are in place, and providing user training. I have frequently assisted users with syncing their devices with other technology, such as laptops or smart T versus my experience also includes troubleshooting common issues such as slow performance, connectivity problems, and software glitches. I handle these issues by first identifying the problem, then methodically testing potential solutions until the issue is resolved. 5. How would you handle a situation where you're unsure how to resolve a technical issue? The first step I would take in such a situation is to gather as much information as possible about the problem at hand. I would ask the user detailed questions about what they were doing when the issue arose, and any error messages they may have received. This can often help pinpoint the root cause of the issue. If this doesn't help me resolve the issue, I would then use all available resources such as online forums, knowledge bases, or colleagues who may have encountered a similar problem. If after using all resources the issue remains unresolved, I would escalate the matter to a senior technician or manager, ensuring I provide them with all the information I have gathered. It's important to maintain clear communication with the user throughout this process, keeping them informed of progress and managing their expectations. This approach ensures that even when faced with unfamiliar problems, I'm still able to provide effective support and maintain a high level of customer service. 6. What steps would you take to resolve a printer connectivity issue? To rectify a printer connectivity issue, several measures need to be undertaken. First, I would verify the printer's power and connection state. If it's a wired printer, I would check the USB or Ethernet connection. For a wireless printer, I would examine the Wi-Fi connection. Next, I would ensure that the printer is installed correctly on the computer and that the correct drivers are in place. If not, I would install or update the necessary drivers. 
I would then check the print queue to see if there are any errors or stalled print jobs that need to be cleared. In case the problem continues, I would reinstall the printer and reset the print spooler, which could help clear any potential issues. I would also check if there's a need for any software updates on the computer, as outdated software can occasionally cause connectivity issues. If all these steps fail, I would consider contacting the printer's manufacturer or seeking expert advice. 7. Describe your experience with remote desktop support tools. Which ones have you used? My experience with remote desktop support tools spans over several years, and I have had the opportunity to work with a variety of them. One of my go-to tools is TeamViewer, which I find user-friendly and efficient for remote access and support. I have also used AnyDesk frequently, especially for quick and unattended access. Another tool in my repertoire is LogMain, which provides robust features for remote support. I've also had experience with Microsoft's remote desktop connection when working with Windows-based systems. These tools have been invaluable in helping me provide timely and effective support to remote users. 8. How would you explain technical issue to non-technical user? It is crucial to break down technical terms into simpler language that the non-technical user can easily understand. I would use analogies or real-life examples to illustrate the problem and the solution. Patience and empathy are key. I would ensure they feel comfortable asking questions and I would take the time to explain until they fully understand. I would also avoid jargon and ensure that the explanation is concise, clear, and to the point. For instance, if the issue is related to bandwidth, I might compare it to a highway. The more cars, data, you have, the more lanes, bandwidth, you need. If the lanes are too crowded, it causes a traffic jam, slowing everything down. Therefore, if your internet is slow, it could be because there's too much data and not enough bandwidth, just like too many cars and not enough lanes. 9. What is your process for prioritizing and managing multiple support requests? I start by categorizing each support request based on its severity level. Critical issues that affect a large number of users or business operations get top priority. For less urgent problems, I consider factors like the submission time of the request, who reported the issue, and the potential impact on productivity or business operations. I also make use of ticketing systems that help me track and organize requests in an efficient manner. I keep users informed about the status of their requests and ensure that all issues are resolved in a timely manner. I always try to remain calm and focused, even when managing multiple support requests simultaneously. 10. Describe a difficult technical problem you solved recently. What was your approach? My recent challenge was a persistent malware issue on a company's network. It was difficult as it was affecting productivity and data security. My approach involved several steps. Firstly, I isolated infected systems to prevent further spread. Secondly, I utilized specialized antivirus tools to clean the systems. Thirdly, I updated all systems with latest security patches. Additionally, I reviewed the firewalls and made necessary adjustments. Finally, I initiated a company-wide training session on safe internet practices. This multi-pronged approach was successful and no further malware issues have been reported since. 11. What operating systems are you most familiar with supporting? I have extensive experience supporting various operating systems, including Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, and Linux distributions. My most proficient would be Microsoft Windows due to its predominance in business environments. I am familiar with troubleshooting, installing, and configuring Windows XP, 7, 8, and 10. In addition, I have had exposure to Mac OS, aiding users with software installations, system updates, and troubleshooting common issues. Lastly, Linux is another OS I am familiar with, specifically Ubuntu. This includes setting up user accounts, updating systems, and basic troubleshooting. 12. How do you stay updated on new technologies and support techniques? Staying updated on new technologies and support techniques is crucial in the fast-paced world of IT. I keep myself informed by constantly engaging with a range of resources. I subscribe to various tech newsletters and regularly follow tech blogs, podcasts, and YouTube channels that focus on the latest in IT. Reading research papers and attending webinars or industry conferences also provide me valuable insights. Participating in online forums like Stack Overflow, Reddit's tech-related subreddits, and GitHub is also beneficial in learning from the community. Lastly, I make sure to dedicate a significant portion of my time for hands-on learning by testing new tools and technologies in a safe environment. 13. What steps would you take to troubleshoot a network connectivity issue? First, 
I would verify if the issue is localized to one device or affecting multiple devices, which helps narrow down potential causes. If it's a single device, I would check the device's network settings, ensuring it's properly connected to the network and has the correct IP configuration. I would also examine the physical connections, such as Ethernet cables or Wi-Fi signal strength. If the issue affects multiple devices, I'd inspect the network equipment like routers and switches, checking their status, rebooting them if necessary, and confirming their configurations are correct. I might also run diagnostic tests to identify any network congestion or failures. If these steps don't resolve the issue, I would document everything done so far and escalate it to a network engineer or a higher level support technician. 14. How do you ensure you fully understand a user's technical issue before attempting to solve it? I begin by asking the user to describe the situation that they're encountering, including any error messages they might have seen and actions they took prior to experiencing the problem. It's important to listen carefully and not interrupt while they're explaining to ensure that I don't miss any critical details. I then repeat their explanation back to them in my own words, asking for confirmation or clarification. This helps me ensure that I have a correct understanding of the issue. Where necessary, I will ask additional probing questions to gather as much information as possible. I also find that it's often helpful to have the user show me the problem if possible, as this can provide valuable context about what's going wrong. 15. How would you handle an angry or frustrated user? In managing an angry or frustrated user, my first step is always to listen attentively to their problem. By understanding their issue, I can offer a more effective solution. I maintain a calm and composed demeanor, ensuring I do not escalate the situation. Empathy plays a significant role, I try to put myself in their shoes and understand their frustration. I make sure my responses are clear, concise, and aimed at resolving the issue at hand. I reassure them that their problem is important and that I am working diligently to resolve it. Lastly, I follow up to ensure the solution provided has fully addressed the issue and the user is satisfied. 16. What is your experience with ticketing or help desk software? In my previous roles, I have utilized several different types of ticketing and help desk software. Some of these include Jira, Zendesk, and ServiceNow. These platforms were instrumental in tracking, prioritizing, and managing support requests. I have found that using this kind overall of software greatly improves efficiency and communication within the IT support team. Besides, they also ensure that no support request slips through the cracks and each issue gets the attention it requires. My experience with these systems has been quite positive, and I am always open to learning new platforms as required by the job. I have worked with several ticketing and help desk tools throughout my career as an IT professional. These tools have been integral in managing, tracking, and prioritizing end-user issues. Ticketing systems like Zendesk, Jira, and ServiceNow have been particularly useful in streamlining the process of handling and resolving user inquiries. I have found these tools to be essential in ensuring that all user requests are addressed in an organized and timely fashion. This experience has made me adept at navigating such systems and leveraging their features for efficient problem resolution. 17. Describe the steps to join a computer to a domain. To join a computer to a domain, it's essential to follow these steps. First, ensure the machine is connected to the network. Then, access the system property settings, usually found in the control panel. Under Computer Name, Domain, and Workgroup Settings, select Change Settings. You will then see the option to change the computer's domain or workgroup. Click Change. There, you can choose to be part of a domain or workgroup. Enter the domain name and verify it's correct. You will need domain administrator credentials to complete this action. After entering the credentials, you can restart the computer for the changes to take effect. Remember, it's crucial to back up any important data before making these changes. Please note, this guidance is generally applicable for Windows operating systems and may vary slightly depending on the specific OS version. 18. What security best practices do you follow when providing remote support? In addressing remote support, I prioritize the implementation of secure connection protocols, such as VPNs. This is essential in ensuring that all data transferred during support sessions are encrypted and protected from potential breaches. Additionally, I practice the principle of least privilege, which means giving only the necessary permissions or access rights to perform the task at hand. After each session, I make sure to revoke any permissions granted to prevent potential misuse. 
I also ensure that all software used for remote support are up to date to avoid any security risks that outdated versions might pose. Lastly, I advocate for user education on safe practices during remote support to help them understand the need for security measures and how they can contribute to their implementation. 19. How would you approach training users on new software or systems? When it comes to training users on new software or systems, my approach involves a blend of theory and practical application. Firstly, I would familiarize myself with the software or system in depth, ensuring I understand all its functionalities. Next, I would develop a simple, easy to understand training material, avoiding technical jargon as much as possible. I believe in the power of hands on training, so I would conduct interactive sessions where users can get practical experience using the software. Regular assessment and feedback would also be part of the process, this helps identify areas where further clarification might be needed. User patience and understanding are key, hence I would be ready to answer all queries and provide extra assistance to those who need it. 20. What is your experience with hardware repairs and upgrades? I have extensive experience with hardware repairs and upgrades. I started working on them during my academic years where I learned about the inner workings of various devices, their components and how to handle them properly. I expanded my skills during my professional career where I dealt with repairing and upgrading various systems. This includes replacing damaged components like motherboards, hard drives, RAM modules, and power supplies, as well as upgrading existing systems for improved performance. I am also adept at troubleshooting hardware issues, identifying the root cause and applying the most effective solution. I believe in staying updated with the latest hardware technologies and regularly enhance my knowledge about the newest components in the market. I am meticulous in my work and ensure that I follow all the necessary safety and precautionary measures while handling hardware. 21. Describe a situation where you had to escalate an issue. How did you handle it? During my tenure as a technical support specialist, there was an incident where a user encountered a complex issue with their computer system. Despite my efforts, I was unable to resolve it due to its advanced nature. Recognizing the severity of the issue, I decided to escalate it to the upper level of the IT department. I documented the problem in detail, outlining the steps I had taken to resolve it so far, and forwarded this information to the appropriate department. I communicated with the user throughout the process, keeping them informed about the situation and expected resolution time. This approach helped to maintain transparency and ensure the user's confidence in the support process. 22. What steps would you take to troubleshoot email issues? When troubleshooting email issues, my first step would be to identify the exact problem by asking the user specific questions about what they are experiencing. Next, I would check if the issue is happening on all devices or only a specific one, which could indicate whether it's a device or account issue. If the problem is account related, I would verify the server settings and password. If it's device related, I would check the email client settings and updates. I would also consider network issues, checking if other internet dependent tasks are working properly. Lastly, if the issue persists, I would consider reaching out to the email provider's support. We hope you found our top 22 desktop support interview questions and answers beneficial for your upcoming interview. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more valuable content.